for a long time, and my workout today was something special to me because I wasn't in pain after. And if you don't know, I have five herniated discs. So that's why we start with the ab ladder to engage the core. Whenever I start with core engagement, that's the center of everything. That's what I like to start with. From the ab ladder, I go right into a calisthenic ladder. I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. A calisthenic ladder, not letter. So I learned this from a guy that was a former Navy SEAL. And he was the one that explained that if you want to get really a great workout with calisthenics and really you'll feel the lactic acid pump, start at one and then work your way up to two and then to three. So what you're seeing here is actually a ladder. And how it worked was I did one push-up, one pull-up, two push-ups, two pull-ups. Now, it's been a little bit, and from all the injuries, I really haven't been doing anything. So I was really feeling it in the back of my shoulders, my lats, my biceps, my grip, my chest. I mean, my core, it was just burning, but it wasn't that kind of burn that was causing injury. It was turning on all the muscles up along my spine. So I slept really, really good. Of course, I have muscle soreness, but that's nothing when you feel like you have a knife in your back. So that's where you're seeing all the little breaks. And it's just the best I can do. And, you know, for someone like me, it was hard to even post this because I was always known as like a superhuman. But just doing push-ups and pull-ups was humbling. So how I set the workout up was doing the ab ladder up and down two times before each segment. So we started with push and pull, and now we're at legs and explosiveness and endurance. So I just did a whole bunch of swings, 10 sets of 10 uh, regular swings. Then we did side to side, forward and back. And then I actually incorporated a little more explosive movements, which are jumping. So I did a little Craig math here, which every two reps counts as one. This is forward and back. I do them side to side. And then actually at an angle where you almost jump at like a 45. And then you go side to side to engage your core. And then you do a complete 180 on these last ones. And these will burn your legs out. And just to finish, I did my last two sets on the ab ladder. Up and down, up and down, keeping that core engaged. Everything's locked out. Got some motivational stuff playing in the back. Stuff that I'm studying and improving on. And we go right into a bottoms up press. I ended up doing, my goal was seven sets of seven. I ended up doing four sets of seven. And I did three sets with the 16 kilogram bell. And again, it's it's weird for me to even have to bring it up. I I guess you can call it an insecurity, but it's it's not because it's here. But I was always using the 32 kilogram, the 71 pound bell. And that was my standard. Well, I can't do that right now, but this is what I can do. And I got a great workout because of it. So if you want to improve your grip and just overall core, this was it. So we went from the bottoms up into the crush curl. So what you do is you physically grab the kettlebell and try to press it together. So you're actually getting like a chest pump, pushing it together as you're doing the curl. So I'm really getting biceps, triceps, forearm grip, just overall endurance, you know, just for, for, for grappling. This is where it's at. I do a lot of bottoms up. A lot of cleans, a lot of presses, a lot of twisted, a lot of explosiveness. And I try to stay moving consistently the entire time. This was my last and final set. And I dropped down to the 26 pound, the 12 kilogram, just so I can get clean reps. And this workout's in the books. I know how discouraging it can be when you can't do what you want. So just do what you can.